I think we've all had times where we enter a game, see your teammate pick an agent like Breach, and you think, oh man, I would have preferred a Sova instead. And then you enter the game and you're pleasantly surprised when your Breach is actually really good and low-key carrying your team. So how is he owning with an off-meta pick? What's he doing differently? And what does he know that we don't? What's going on Pro Guides fam? It's Royal G and today we're going to give you an argument for why playing off-meta can actually be a good thing. And also talk about some of the unique benefits that come with playing unorthodox agents. So make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and let's get started. Oh yeah, and question of the day. What's your favorite off-meta pick? I'll be honest, I only started really playing Valorant somewhat recently, which was around when KO was released. A lot of the reasons why I did that was because I just quit competing semi-professionally in CSGO, and KO was the first agent that reminded me of CSGO and Valorant. Obviously, we all know how expectations did not meet reality when he released, but he still holds a special place in my heart. The recent buffs are awesome, and I think he's slowly clawing his way back into the meta. Let me know which off-meta agent is your favorite in the comments below. So first things first, meta is a very important topic in competitive games. I'm sure that you've likely heard this term used at some point, and if you've watched our past videos, we talk extensively about the meta as well. For those of you who don't know what meta is, it's basically what is seen as the best strategies to win in a given game, in this case, Valorant. Some people like to call it the most effective tactics available as an acronym. It's not really where the term meta originates from, but it could be a good way to memorize it. Typically, metas are defined by a mix of theory crafting like ability combinations and practical data like pro team pick rates, win rates, and whatnot. So if a certain team comp is considered meta, it usually means that this comp is theoretically optimal in game and would give you the best chances of winning. For example, the current meta composition on a map like Icebox is to have Viper, Sova, Jet, Sage, and either Rays or Reyna. The logic follows that Viper is the best controller for splitting up sites and setting up for post plants. Sova is needed to prevent your team from getting opt and pushed up on. Jet is just Jet and is borderline broken. Sage's walls is almost necessary for taking B site. And Razor Reyna are just generally good agents on the map for their own reasons. But obviously that doesn't mean there's no other way to play Icebox. It's not like all pro teams run this exact composition, although most run a very similar one. Some teams might choose to drop Sage and use a Killjoy instead or some might prefer Reyna over Raze or the other way around. The meta is just pointing out the easiest, most effective, and most recognized way currently to approach Icebox. Note that I said currently because metas can change over time. Anyways, the reason why meta is important is that choosing meta agents, compositions, or strategies usually gives you the best chance of winning. We're also motivated to play by the meta, not only because it's theoretically the best, but maybe it's also the most versatile or the easiest way to play. Regardless, meta is pretty much the best way to approach the game. Or is it? Hey Vsauce, Royal here. Today we're going to talk about... Just kidding. While the meta itself may not be wrong by pointing out a certain comp or agent as the strongest, there's a lot more to consider in game than just the theory. It's not like Valorant is some sort of rock paper scissors type game where if you choose the right agent, you just win. Choosing the best agent might increase your odds of winning at agent select, but it says nothing about how the game will actually turn out. You can still lose with a better comp, and the best comp might not even be that good against certain opponents. Let me explain why. Now immediately, I know some of you guys might be thinking about having bad aim, or how bad your teammates are, or how the enemy team has a smurf, but that's not what I'm getting at. Those factors do affect your results drastically, but there's something more to this than just practical reasons. Even though playing by the meta lets you take advantage of the best strategies in the game, smart and experienced players also realize the cost of using those strategies which is predictability. When you play by the rules, then it's easy for someone who understands the rules to predict your actions in game. At the same time, because most people play by the rules, people will automatically become more comfortable with the rules because they play against it so often. So in Valorant terms, if you know that a jet likes to smoke dash onto site, then you won't be surprised when they smoke dash onto site, and if you're really good, you'll have a counter for it. This is one of the fatal costs of playing by the meta. You play by the rules, which also means you'll lose by the rules as well. You know how sometimes the enemy does something really stupid like walking through a smoke and you die for it and you just get really angry? They weren't playing by the rules, and because you weren't prepared, you got punished. But of course, there's also things like your game sense, aim, or positioning that could have caused it as well. So beyond all the meta talk, if you want to get some individualized help with the fundamentals or even understand the meta at a higher level, you've got radiant level coaches like me on ProGuides.com 24-7 who are trained to improve you at any level. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran, coaching can always be beneficial. 
Reaching the top is rarely a solo mission, so let us be part of your journey to unlocking your potential. If you're interested, feel free to click the link in the description. With that said, playing by the rules or playing standard is usually the preferred method because it's comfortable and familiar for most players. And of course, it's usually the best way to play in theory. But like I just said, that comes at the cost of being predictable. So how does playing off meta challenge this? Off meta agents are the ones you don't see in your games often and usually for a good reason. Some reasons are that they're hard to use, too niche, or simply because there's just better options out there. Think about agents like Yoru for example, who has a really unique set of abilities but is clunky as hell and requires a lot of outplaying to work. Or his duelist friend Phoenix who's a jack of all trades and has a strong ult but isn't really special in any way. While they aren't necessarily bad or unusable in game, there's just better options like Jet Arena. So what's the big deal then? Simply put, they don't follow the rules. In Valorant, plays and playstyle is heavily agent dependent. Depending on what agents you're playing against, you'll usually have a good idea of how your opponents will play and what kinds of plays you can expect from each agent. You've played against the agents before on the same map in that same position, and you've had a large enough sample size of games to have a pretty good idea of what they can do. But if you notice your opponent is playing Breach, Teo, or Yoru, how are they going to play? And what can you expect? There's a good chance that you don't know. And that's a competitive advantage for the enemy. You know whenever you play a new map, everything is like super new and you still have to discover all the contact points, the plays, agent interactions, and like so much more? Playing against an off-meta agent is a bit similar. If you don't know how they play, then you're more likely to fall into a trap or run into a play you don't know the counter to. Your opponent is unpredictable because you don't have the experience to play around it. Now some of you may think this isn't that big of a deal, but keep in mind that it only takes one hiccup to completely throw off a setup or a play. Take for example this clip of 100 Thieves vs Gambit on Split in VCT Berlin. Notice how Shados is holding his Sky Flash to pop out the Astral Wall as soon as Nats takes contact. This is a very standard play that could easily net Gambit multiple hills. Theoretically, this would be a round winning play if the Flash comes out as expected. But since 100 Thieves had steal on KO, right before that play was about to happen, the suppression knife hits CT and Shados gets suppressed, which completely ruins the play. What happens next is a complete wipeout on B site and a round win for 100 Thieves. Keep in mind that this is at the highest level of play, where players are fighting for world championships. Something as simple as an unexpected suppression ruins a play that could have definitely changed the course of the match. And of course, this works in lower elos too, although a little differently. At lower skill levels, just the act of playing an off meta agent could already be a competitive advantage, since your opponents won't be used to your abilities. That also means any cool plays that you know on that agent will likely work, because your opponents won't know what's happening. When Yoru first came out, everyone was surprised by Yoru players flashing on top of their teleport. This may have worked the first couple times, but nowadays it's seen as a predictable play. But plays like ulting with the shorty and barrel stuffing someone out of the ult is still a strong play which catches a lot of people off guard. Playing against a Yoru is still so unconventional that it's easy to forget how to counter this type of play. It's theoretically pretty weak if you're expecting it, but if you aren't, then it's hard to beat. This applies to every agent in the game, but I think you and I both know that if a jet is entering into sight, you can expect a smoke and a dash every single time. That's one of the biggest differences between playing to the meta and playing off meta. Another benefit to playing off meta is more psychological than anything else, and that is the ability to make your opponents hesitate or feel uncomfortable. If they don't know what you can do, then less experienced players would often take the safer route and choose not to test you for fear of losing. This directly hurts their confidence and can subliminally make them internally tilt or play too passively, which is another competitive advantage that you can abuse. If you're a proactive player and can pressure a whole team to play scared, then you've effectively carried the game for your team already. But keep in mind though that your teammates may suffer from the same feeling if you aren't playing well, so you also run the risk of being called a troll. It's a dangerous game, but a good player on an off-meta agent can totally take advantage of these factors as well. Nothing feels better than your teammate popping off with Breach and boosting your team's vibes. At the end of the day, do realize that all of this doesn't mean much if you aren't good at that agent. Please don't take away from this video that all you need to do is lock in Yoru in your next game and you'll win guaranteed, since that's definitely not the case. Rather, take that if you spent a lot of time researching your agent either through watching streamers, entering customs, or browsing TikTok, you can and will have a lot of success once you bring them to ranked prepared. If you come into rank knowing your agent on a level no one else does, you'll naturally be able to outplay them by taking the initiative and making magic happen. Even at higher ranks, this is the case. 
There's so many intricate aspects to agent masteries such as timings, playstyle, and positioning that is unique to every agent. When you can abuse them to your advantage, then you'll naturally start to see success. I guess to sum it up, playing meta agents is the most efficient and standard way to play the game, but it relies more on raw skill and fundamentals to succeed. But if you walk the unbeaten path by mastering an agent outside of the meta, you can instead use agent knowledge and unorthodox play to beat your opponents. Anyways, that wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you guys think. It's been your host, Royal G, and I'll see you guys in the next one.